uh, hello friends today in this tutorial we will be building a uh, JWT authentication system inside Node.js and Express and basically it's, it, it will be a complete project and uh, you can see this is a live demo of this project so you can see we have this page here so whenever you go to this page you will be landing on the login page where you can fill out your details email and password and there is a login button and we also have the sign up page as well where you can create your new brand new account and all this information guys we will be storing it inside the mongodb database you will see it is running locally inside my machine and uh, jwt as you all know it's called as a json web token it's a new form of technology where we basically store this token inside a cookie inside the browser and every time user makes a request we basically compare this uh, json web token inside the cookie if it is there then we grant the user to the protected route so now let me show you the live demo guys so first of all if you go to the login page and if you try to basically write an email address and a password it also comes with validation messages guys if i log in here you it will say to me that this email is not registered because you will see that no nothing is there inside the database so we first of all need to basically uh, sign up for a new user so i will click the sign up page here and now basically i will choose a email address and then I will choose a password and also if I choose uh, less than six characters I will get error that minimum password length is six characters so this is coming through mongoose library guys mongoose have some kind of validations which when you basically store schema these are the error messages that we are storing so let me provide at least six characters of password click on sign up and you will be redirected to the protected route guys this is the basically the protected route and if you go to inspect element and basically go to application you will basically see this is the cookie which is stored here inside the cookie we are storing this uh, json web token this is the value of this json web token guys basically this is a concept that we are using here we are storing this json web token on the users cookies browser so every time you can see expiry date of this is three days so uh, three days this token will live inside the user browser so basically if you close this wind close this session here if you close this session open a new tab then if you open localhost 3000 so what should happen it will automatically detect that the user has this token inside their cookie cookies basically if you see here if i go to my application still this cookie remains just uh, uh, this json web token so this token it will be recognized by the node.js express application and basically it will automatically redirect the user back to the dashboard page so if i go if i wanted to go to login page i can go to the login page as well but still you will see if i go to the dashboard page i can because i have the token so I can navigate to any page inside my application because I have the JSON web token. So if I see my basically guys if I refresh the database you will see a database will be created here which is called as node authentication and we have the table out there users and we are storing three details guys id will be automatically inserted and we have email address and password as you will see it is successfully hashed here we are not storing a plain text password we are hashing it using the bcrypt library and also guys for storing these cookies inside our node.js express application we are using a library called as cookie parser to basically insert this java uh, json web token inside the uh, cookies uh, browser so this value so the nice thing about that guys if i if user if anybody tampers this let's suppose it is stored inside the user's machine so no, nobody can uh, edit this apart from the user so let's suppose i basically change this cookie so now this cookie is changed here and now if the user refreshes the page automatically this this will be detected and it will be redirected back to the login page now if i go to the dashboard page I can't even go to that you will see it will still redirect me to login page because the javascript web token is not correct so we have the verification process as well so this javascript web token is not correct so that's why it redirected back back to the login page and now let's suppose if I log in it with the wrong email address if I enter the password you will see that that email is not registered so I need to enter the same email address that we entered 
at the time of registration. Let me enter that correct email address password and now click on login you will see the login is created and once again a new token has been created guys inside my application tab JWT you will see that so let's suppose if I show you this process uh, let me you can see that we also have the option to delete this so if I delete this token no nothing is there right now and if I refresh here automatically this will redirect, redirect me to the login page so this is basically the functionality guys I can create a new user I can basically login users using the JWT token here you will see that this is a dashboard account page and we got a simple welcome message in the dashboard page it is we are showing the user detail we are showing the logout button we also have the logout button guys so basically if you press this logout button let me just uh, write here so now let me show you what is so you can see as I press the logout button guys what will happen it will automatically delete this JWT token from the cookie so as I press this button you will see JWT token will be gone here so it, it will automatically delete this token from the cookies machine or browser and once again if I try to log in with the correct email address it will create this javascript web sorry json web token click on login you will see jwt token has been created this is a token here and it is granting access to the protected route so we will be building this authentication system guys from scratch so if you would like to basically watch this video from scratch i will highly suggest it and basically i have written a complete blog post on my tutorial website guys the link is given in the description of the video so if you want the full source code I will highly suggest you can even buy this full source code if you want the full configuration that I, I will use in this video so if for any reason the code is not working you can buy the full source code for a very good price and step by step instruction is also given here you will see about 3000 words my blog post is and all the source code is given still if you face any sort of issues you can buy that source code this is a complete application so I will be writing this code step by step explaining each instruction in detail so now let's get started guys by building this application and in the next section I will show you how to initiate this project now guys welcome to this section so in this section we will create our project so I will go to my projects folder guys and uh, let me just go to the D directory and uh, inside this directory guys I will initialize a new project which will I will call this as JWT auth and I will go into this directory guys and basically open this inside Visual Studio Code text editor you will see it's a empty directory right here and now we need to initialize our project so the very first thing we need to do guys we need to initialize the package.json file so npm init-y so this will create the package.json file and after that guys we just need to install all the dependencies which are necessary for this project so first of all we will install express guys which will be the web server here and then we also need to install cookie parser which is used to basically store and read the cookies inside our node.js application and then we need mongoose library guys mongoose if you don't know basically it's a library which interacts with the mongodb database we need that we also need validator guys validator makes it very much easy in order to validate any sort of data such as email address password so we need this library validator and then we also need guys json web token in order to create jwt tokens inside our authentication system so this is really necessary for this application then we will need ejs guys it's a template engine embedded javascript so we need this template engine also and lastly we need bcrypt bcrypt library guys based basically it makes it very much easy to simply uh, hash our passwords for security purposes so these are all the dependencies guys which is needed express cookie parser mongoose validator json web token ejs and bcrypt so just enter it and now guys it will take some time to install all these dependencies and it will basically list out all these dependencies in the dependency section it will create this inside this package or json file once this is installed so it will hardly take 5 to 10 seconds if your internet speed is good good 
so it is you can see it is just installing it so just wait now you can see that guys in the dependency sections all these dependencies are installed here now we need to make the starting point of our application index.js guys so we will simply make it so let me just zoom in so that you can perfectly see the code here so now we will first of all initialize our express we will require it guys so we will simply say express at the top require express and then we will make a simple express app guys and after this guys what we will say we will basically import all the dependencies all the middleware functions as well so for this we will simply import uh, let's suppose our cookie parser middleware cookie parser this is also required so we will simply require it cookie parser so how we can pass middleware guys we will simply use app.use which is cookie parser and we can initialize this so in this easy way you can in, uh, basically pass middlewares with the help of use method and here we will make a public directory guys where we will store all the static files here so we will store the CSS for this the CSS file which we will use for this project so just make it we need to make this directory a static so for this we will use uh, express.static uh, function and we will pass the public directory so this makes it static directory this is really necessary so after this guys we also need to pass our uh, express.json middleware function which is very much useful because whenever you basically send the data from the html form so whenever we submit the data here inside these forms so we need to convert this data into a java uh, javascript object using the json middleware so that's why we are invoking it express.json this is necessary so we have initialized these three middleware functions guys which is uh, making this directory a static cookie parser and express.json now we need to connect to our database which is mongodb before that we also need to set the view engine guys which is ejs we have installed it so just we have set view engine and now we have locally our database guys we are using Mo uh, mongodb community edition guys you will see you just need to connect here if you install it new connection simply connect and and then basically if you are storing it if you have the local mongodb for that we first of all need to initialize our uh, uri of the database so for this we will make a new variable which is db uri this will be basically be mongodb colon localhost and the port number on which default mongodb runs is 27017 and then followed by the database name so let's suppose i give this database as jwt auth so this is our database which will automatically gets created you need not have to do anything and after that we will use the mongoose library guys so simply mongoose will be imported so just make variable mongoose so just require this mongoose library guys this is necessary and this basically library contains a connect method which will actually connect to this db uri this uh, uri of the database and then we can pass some options so we can basically pass the option which is use new url parser so this is required we can set it to true and we can even pass the second option here which is use uh, unified topology to true and lastly we can say use create index so these are important options guys which we need to pass here sometimes if you don't pass these three options sometimes the connection will not work so you need to pass these three options this returns a callback function guys so we can simply handle this result and we can simply say here uh, inside this after the connection is made we can start our express application on port number 5000 so you will see guys if any sort of error take place we can basically say error take place you can see console log error so now let me stop my previous application which is running on port number 3000 guys it is you can see it is running on port number 3000 let me stop this application so now if you refresh my old application is not running so now 
I can start my new application guys by nodemon command nodemon if you don't know guys nodemon is basically a module which uh, automatically restart your application whenever you make any sort of changes it is saying that uh, uh, use create index is not supported let me see guys use create index is not supported so you can eliminate this option guys use create index if it's not supported and again if I start this application guys you will see my application has started and you can see you can also add a callback function here just to let you know that your app is started you can see app is listening on port 5000 so it will automatically restart if you just say app is listening on port 5000 so if you just open this now a local host 5000 nothing will happen because we haven't added the route you can see cannot get slash because we haven't add a, any sort of route here so now we can basically add a route guys so after this basically we can make a request here which is app.get and simply we can make it for the uh, get route and whenever you do this we need to write here response request response and here we can render out a template guys we can say re response.render which is uh, login so whenever we go to the home page guys we will show we will show the login page so for this we need to create the views directory so just create a views directory guys and here we will create the view which is login.ejs so this view will be created guys and uh, inside this you can write anything here let's suppose i have this is the login page so if you just refresh now you will now see if you go to the i think you just need to refresh it this is a login page you will see that now this is rendering out this template now in the next section guys we will basically render out all the views here which is the login view sign up view and uh, we will look at that section now guys in this section we will define all the views which are necessary for this application so first of all we will tackle the login page so you will see inside index.js whenever we open the home page we are basically showing the login page you will see that so for this inside login.ejs file here so the beauty of ejs guys allows you to basically render out dynamic stuff so for the simple reason we will create basically a new folder inside this which is called as partials and inside this guys we will create a file called as head.ejs so head basically if you all know guys inside html pages head remains constant in all the pages so that's why we need to create a constant head here so we will eliminate this portion so this will be constant for all the pages so we need the css file in in all the pages so that's why we'll require it and we will basically include this file we will call this as style.css styles.css so we will simply create this inside the public folder so just create it public folder and create this file which is styles.css we will write the CSS so we are just including this CSS file here so after this guys what we need to do is that basically if, if you want to inc include this file inside our login page so there is a syntax out there which you can follow here which is this EJS syntax which uh, basically includes uh, dynamic files this percentage sign and then dash and then we have the include function and here you can pass the address so we need to pass the partials folder and inside we have the file header so put a comma and close it like this this is basically the syntax guys so we are including this file dynamically inside our template partials head.ejs so inside this file guys we will basically have a constant navigation bar which we will, we will show in all the pages so this navigation bar will first of all we will have this heading jwt auth so after this we will have unordered list we will have two buttons the first button will go to the slash login route this will be login button and the second button guys which will be for the sign up route so this will go to the sign up page sign up 
so we will also give it a class of btn guys so now you will see that guys we also need to close this navigation so just close it here so we have this navigation bar and we are including it inside login file so if you refresh now you will basically say guys cannot include include the partials dot header let me see guys what is the error uh, i think sorry the spelling is wrong here partials t i a l s partials okay let me now refresh again it is saying uh, there is some kind of mistake out there could not find the include file header let me see sorry <laughs> i have called this a wrong name guys so i need to rename this to header not head so just rename this and if you refresh now you will see guys this uh, this will be showing here and we need to repeat this for all the pages guys that we create and uh, let me create our sign up page sign up page sign up ejs so we need to do the same thing for the sign up page as well so i will simply copy this so i will replace here this is a sign up page and we will create one other page guys which will be the dashboard page this will be the protected route guys and uh, this will the users will be redirected to this page whenever they log in successfully and now if you see guys basically we don't have the routes yet so now we need to create the routes guys so now to create the routes it's very simple we will not be creating routes inside our index.js file so we will be separating the logic into multiple folders so for creating the routes guys we will create a separate folder called as routes and inside this we will define the authentication routes so we will define this auth routes file and inside this file guys we will define all the authentication routes which are necessary so for this guys we will basically sorry this needs to be authentication routes js not ejs it's a javascript file so we will require basically the express router guys so we will destructure it from the express package we will require it and then guys we will simply initialize this router by invoking the new reference of it and after this guys we will define the routes here so we will have four routes this will be for the get request to the sign up so whenever someone goes to sign up a get request we will basically uh, make a uh, controller file guys this controller file which will be responsible so uh, this will be re responsible uh, for uh, uh, interacting with it so we need to make a controllers folder guys so if you are uh, familiar with the mvc pattern you will be recognizing it model view controller so we will have a controllers folder and we will create a file which is called as auth controller dot js so now this file guys we will ins uh, just require it we will call this file as auth controller and we will simply require this file dot dot slash so you require it inside this controller file guys we will define all the logic which is necessary we will define four methods here we will basically use module dot exports which will automatically export the method for us so this will be the method name which will be sign up underscore get and this will request response and uh, inside this we will simply render out the template which will be sign up that we define inside the views folder if you see this template so this is more clearer way guys this is the more preferred way of using the model view controller approach we are separating the logic for our application into respective files so now we can simply uh, call this method we can say auth controller dot sign up get that's all and similarly we can define all the methods guys inside this so we can simply copy this three more times so this time we will say this will be sign up 
underscore post this will be for the post request and here you can say response dot send uh, let's suppose uh, user created and this time this will be for uh, the login get request so whenever someone goes to the login page we will simply render out the login template and this time this will be for the login post so here you will say response.send login successful so now we have four methods guys we can simply go to authentication routes and we can create the next route here router.post to the sign up request we will call authentication controller dot sign up post and then we can call uh, the next route router dot get so when someone goes to the login page we will say authentication controller login get and lastly router dot post login so this will be authentication controller login post and lastly guys we will export this uh, controller uh, sorry export this router we will simply say module dot exports which will be router that's all so we are exporting this file which is this router from this file and now we can include this file guys inside our index.js and we can simply pass this as a middleware we can say auth routes we can require it from this file which is uh, routes slash auth routes and we can pass it as a middleware guys we can say app dot use authentication routes that's all so we can simply pass it as a middleware that's all so if you refresh your application now guys and if you go to the login page it will re redirect to the this this same page if you go to sign up page you will see this is the sign up page you will see this is a login page this is a sign up page so we have successfully implementing the routing as well guys and uh, one more page we do need guys uh, which is the dashboard page so we can define it inside index.js so, so when somebody goes to dashboard page you can simply here render out our dashboard page as well so response.render dashboard so we are rendering it and now if I open this dashboard page guys slash dashboard so this is a dashboard page so all the three uh, views that we define right here guys it is now rendering it now we need to simply add the functionality guys inside the login form so inside the login form guys we will basically have a form so we don't need to give a action attribute so simply inside this action we sorry we will have a heading login and we will basically have a label for the input sorry fields which where we will require the user to enter the email address and the password so this will be input type of text and we will be giving a name attribute email and similarly we will basically have a div section where we will be displaying the error message email error if any sort of error has been made by the user and similarly we will have the input field for password as well password you will see that and then we will allow the user to enter the password input type password and name password and then guys we will basically have a div section where we will be displaying the error for the password as well and then we will basically have a submit button guys so we will basically have a button and we can say login this is the login form guys that's all that you need to you need to close the body and the html tag that's all if you now refresh now you will see basically your login form here this is the thing and same we need to copy paste here uh, for the sign up page as well this is the same thing here we just need to change here uh, sign up here so same things we need to write the email and the password so this is uh, clearly the same thing and button we just need to change here which is sign up 
so now if you refresh go to the sign up page this is a sign up form this is a login form now we basically need to uh, paste the css guys the css code i will not write this is not related to this project you can go to my description uh, my blog post you can simply copy this code and paste it inside your public styles.css this is slightly just to customize this project we have added the css if you, if you now refresh you will see basically your forms have been successfully styled so this is the styling that we have given this is a login this is a sign up page this is a login page you will see that now here you can write the styles here you can see that so this is basically the thing guys and now in the next tutorial we will be setting up the data the models where how we can store our data so i will be seeing you in the next section now guys in this section we will define basically our models models basically refers to the data the tables so we have this mongodb database guys so you will see automatically if i refresh it uh, I have created this database here. If you see, we have named this as JWT auth. If you see, uh, basically this database will not be created here. If you search here, the database hasn't been created. Why it hasn't been created? Because we haven't initialized it. For initializing it, we need the mongoose library in order to connect to the MongoDB database. We have just connected it, but we haven't created any database or collections. For creating this, we need to first of all define the schema. So for this, we need to create a separate folder called as models. So this needs to be a folder, not a file. So I will need to create a folder called as models. Inside this file, you will call this, your model will be as user.js. I can call this as user.js. So right here inside this guy's model, you need to first of all import our mongoose library so simply require this mongoose library guys and after this guys we just need to define the schema for our application schema refers to the different kinds of fields that we will have so mongoose provides a method guys which is called a schema method and inside this we can provide an options so we will have two fields uh, email and password so this email field will be an object and here we can provide similarly we will have the password field and we can have some validators so these validators first of all we will tell the type of this string oh, sorry data field this will be of type string and then the validators so one such validator is required guys so this simply means that user must write the email address so we will set it to true and there is also a unique identifier or validator guys this makes it this uh, ensures that the email which is entered by the user is unique so let's suppose a email is already taken and then the user is typing the same email again and again then it will show you error so unique is set to true and then we also have lower case as well let's suppose the user has entered a email address in capital letters that's what the this will automatically lowers it and then insert it into the database and for the password guys uh, this will also be of type string and for the password we also need the required to be true and one other will be min minimum length which is min length of six characters so password must be of minimum of six characters that's all so we have now defined our schema guys so after this what we need to do we need to create the collection so now to create the collection it's very simple we will call this as user and we will say mongoose dot model model is basically the function and here you will pass the collection name let's suppose i want to create user so mongoose will create the plural version version of whatever you provide here let's suppose it will automatically add s whenever it creates the collection and here we need to pass the schema that we defined which is user schema that's all and then we will export this module dot exports user that's all so now we have defined this uh, file guys which is user.js this is actual model file we have defined it 
So after this guys, we can simply rename this to the capital U just for just rename it to capital U user.js. Now we can go to controller file guys, authentication controller. And now inside this sign up underscore post method guys, instead of returning user created, what we will return. Uh, let me also show you uh, if at the time here we will use postman. After this we will allow the user to enter or sign up and log in through HTML form. Before that we will use a, this tool called as postman. If you don't know about postman guys, it's a free tool which is a software, the desktop software which allows you to make uh, HTTP requests to the backend API. So you can download this software, it's completely free. It has its own website. I have already have this. So my backend API is running on uh, localhost 5000 so if i make a get request to the home route guys you will see it will return me the page here you will see the same html code it will return it, you can even preview it also here also like this so you will we, it's a very handy tool to make get and post request so let's suppose i want to make a get request to the slash login route this will go to this one and if i now need to make a post request so it is see login successful the same message that we put here which is login successful and if i make a uh, post request to the sign up post method uh, what will happen i change it to sign up here and uh, let's suppose i make a post request here you will see user created instead of this user created guys we need to now insert the user into the database for doing this it's very simple uh, we will delete this instead we will basically uh, write the code here first of all we will in, uh, import the model file right here at the top which we have created just a while back require models and we will import this file so after this guys we will simply now extract the email and the password which is passed to it email password we will destructure it in the body request or body that's all so that's why we passed this middleware function if you see express.json so this is required for this if you don't pass this we can't get these details inside our like this from the body so now we can simply console log email and uh, password let's suppose so how to basically pass these details guys uh, using postman it's very simple uh, let me show you so here whenever you make the post request you need to simply go to the body and simply uh, change it to json here and here you will provide your email address property and password property if i click send here uh, it is saying that cannot destructure property email of request body as it is undefined. Uh, let me see here. If you go to here uh, console. Uh, localhost sign up. Cannot restructure email and password uh, let me just uh, resend this request here uh, again localhost sign up post request let me write this once again email and password So let me see guys what is the error here inside this uh, guys I figured out the error that was that was just a problem with the internet so now if you basically send out this post request guys with this uh, email address and password if I click the send request so if you see inside the console basically it is printing out whatever email address and password that we sent here you will see we have sent this email address it is successfully logging it inside the console so now what we need to do is that here we need to simply uh, uh, create a user with this details so we can simply 
inside try catch block we can simply use the bongoose method so if any sort of error take place we can display that error so inside the try block guys we will simply create a new user and we just need to make this uh, async just make it a async because we need to use a wait here and here we will simply use the user model that we imported right here at the top and basically it contains a method guys to create a new user inside mongoose in the mongodb database and here we need to pass the details you will pass the email and the password which is passed here after this guys uh, whenever it is created we can simply pass a json response back to the client response.status201 which is successfully created and we can pass the json response the user information that's all this is two lines of code guys and now if i make the same request here let's suppose if i make the same request here you will see that it is sending out the request uh, i need to simply refresh it you will see uh, could not get response i need to once again send this request so it is saying that uh, a validator error password is shorter than the minimum allowed length you will see that's the exactly my point guys it basically returns you the validation errors guys this mongoose package so every time you make a mistake in either of the fields that you enter we have put a restriction inside the schema that you see right here we have put minimum length of six characters so you will see we are not providing the minimum length of characters so we need to increase the character limit here and again i send this request you will see this uh, record will be created automatically the id field will be created automatically this is the primary key of the table and we have the email address and the password if i refresh my mongodb database you will see that the database jwt auth will be created uh, if i see here jwt auth where it is uh, I think yeah you can see JWT auth and inside this we have this users table and we have this information which is captured email address and the password for now we are storing the password in plain text but it's not recommended for production so anytime your database is compromised all the information will be still stolen so I will be hashing the passwords using the bcrypt library in the later sections you will now see if I again uh, sign up with the same user guys i will get an error inside my if i refresh it you will see basically this will be the different error now duplication key error you can see that the email has already been taken so this error will be different here you will see that error was different and this error is again uh, different so we will basically handle these errors guys and show them inside the browser using this you will see key pattern email we have made this property unique to true that's why these error messages are there so now to basically uh, show clearer messages guys instead of using this uh, the these messages we can even provide a property called uh, let me provide these properties uh, messages we can even show clearer messages as well so we will cover it in the next section uh, now guys in this section we will be defining custom error messages and we will be showing it inside our whenever we make in a request inside postman we will be showing custom error messages as json response for this we first of all need to customize our model file inside user.js we need to basically uh, add the custom error messages guys so here it's very easy inside mongoose you just need to convert this into an array true and the second parameter you can define your own custom error message let's suppose if the user hasn't entered the email address you will simply say that please enter your email that's all this is a custom error message and also we will be doing the same thing for the validate as well if the user hasn't entered a valid email address for this guys we will require a package which is called as validate that we installed we will install this validator package 
required this and from this we have this is email validator which automatically checks whether the email address is valid or not and basically we can pass this validate here sorry we have a property called as validate this basically it's a function and we will basically pass is email this automatically checks whether the entered email is valid or not if it is not valid then we will in, uh, pass the error message please enter a valid email that's all you can see that guys we have added two custom error messages to the email field and same we need to do for the password as well so if the password is not being entered we will simply say please enter a password and also for the minimum length guys if the minimum length is not met then we will say minimum password length is six characters that's all so that's all the modification that you need to do guys in the inside this file now so now if you basically send if you go to your authentication controller file so if you now make any sort of uh, request we can even just make a status here response dot status 400 and also we can send out this uh, as json like this so if i now make the same request guys uh, let's suppose if i again make the same request and if i make a mistake inside password if my password is only one character if i send this request you will see that guys basically it will return a json response to me and it will contain the exact error message that i pointed minimum password length is six characters so whatever i put here inside my file custom error messages it is showing me inside the json response so in this way basically you can define the custom error messages so it also contains a lot more properties guys which we will make use of uh, how we can show these error messages to the user whenever we make html forms so we have this errors uh, object it contains password property and a message user validation failed password minimum password length is six characters and similarly if i don't write a valid email address let's suppose if i don't write a valid email address so now this will contain two properties for the email as well please enter a valid email user defined and also minimum password length is six characters so now this errors object has two properties email and password so this is how we can define these error messages guys and uh, similarly we can basically write a function here inside our authentication controller dot js so whenever we have these error messages we can basically parse these error messages and for doing this we will make a separate function for this we can basically define these uh, const errors and we can say handle errors function we will define this function pass the error like this and instead of this we will pass the errors here like this so now we need to define these uh, error message and uh, this function handle errors we will take the error as argument so inside this guys uh, inside this function we will basically extract first of all our uh, error message like error dot message and error code as well we can do this like this very easy after this we will make a simple errors uh, object in which we will have two properties error for the email and error for the password for now this will be empty by default whenever we start the function after this guys we will have various if conditions so the first if condition will be for the if the error message triple equal to incorrect email address so this is basically the pattern guys that you, you that you saw inside your validation error messages you can see uh, if the if you haven't entered uh, uh, in a valid email address so we will simply say we will initialize it to the errors dot email this email is not registered if you do that 
this is slightly complicated function guys uh, but you just need to copy paste this function it's very easy to show the error validation messages same will be for the incorrect password if you entered incorrect password then it will say that password is incorrect you can customize these messages accordingly and same for duplicate email error as well so for duplicate error we have a code right here which i showed you in the console if you just missed here this basically returns out the code here if i showed you i showed if i drag down here uh, if i s you can see e double one this is basically the code here double one triple zero this is the same code that we are extracting here so if this is the code here then we can simply say th that email is already registered and we will simply return the errors so we are simply doing this if and then lastly we will have this uh, simple if condition guys this basically if will include all the validation messages we are using a simple for each loop for all the error messages we are defining a new array and we are appending the error messages that's that's it and lastly we will return this errors object that's all so this will cover all the scenarios guys all the error messages which will be there so now at last we just need to we will simply send out as a json response that's all so if you make now the same uh, mistake guys error messages will be returned to you please enter a valid email minimum password length is 6 characters so now we can easily pass this json response and display the error messages in the browser and now if i the password is correct now but if the email is invalid you will see please enter a valid email password will be empty if i say email is correct if i don't enter the password please enter a password if i don't enter anything please enter your email please enter your password so all these customization all the error messages are showing here guys inside postman now we simply need to do this process inside the browser so we will cover it inside the next section Uh, now guys in this section we will be hashing our passwords as you will see inside our database we are basically storing plain text passwords which are you will see password is anybody can see this password so this is not a recommended practice at all and uh, that's why we will be hashing the passwords so for this you need to go to your eusr.js so here there is some kind something called as mong uh, mongoose hooks if you just type here mongoose hooks it is similar to my sql triggers guys so whenever when whenever someone uh, if you go to mongoose hooks you will be what are hooks in mongoose they are useful for running middleware functions before or after a query or operation so this is also similar to if you use my sql database my sql triggers so this also is a name database object that is associated with the table and that activates when a particular event occurs for the table so let's suppose if you uh, just uh, save this information inside a collection or table so just before or after if you want to perform any sort of operation in that case you will be using mongodb hooks so now to initialize the mongodb hooks it's very easy we will use the user schema here object and we will define it as hook here there can be two types of hooks either it can be post or it can be pre so we need to basically uh, fire this event before we save the data so we have various hooks here after we save the data or after we read the data so we have various hooks out there you can see aggregate count count documents insert many all that so we are uh, triggering the this hook only when we before we are saving this data so we will have this next function guys 
this next middleware function we just need to execute this next middleware function but before that we just need to hash the plain password so for hashing this guys we need to basically import that module which was brcrypt we need to require that module brcrypt so this module guys for that we need to first of all create a salt so we just need to make this async and uh, we will create a salt by using bcrypt dot generate salt and how we create the hash guys we will basically mix the salt with the actual password we will say this dot password this is actual password which is a plain text password we already have available using this syntax and after this we will again await we will say bcrypt and we will use the hash method and here we will pass the plain text password to the and we will mix this with the salt so this will generate the hash version of the password guys that's all that you need to do so this hook will automatically trigger before we save the data to the mongodb database by executing this line so just make sure that you put this before this if you put after this then this will not work and now if you uh, automatically if i delete this record here so now there is no record out there if i try to basically go to postman and let's suppose i enter the email address and enter a plain text password so hopefully it will return the hashed version of the password so now you will see that guys the password is successfully hashed here it is no longer being seen by anyone so if your database is compromised then the details of the user will not be stolen so if you refresh now so you will see that the password is successfully hashed so now in the next section guys we will basically try to do the same thing for the login functionality as well uh, now guys in this section we will talk about that how we can actually create a html uh, form and basically do this operation of uh, signing up users and creating the records so for now we are using the postman but uh, now we will basically create a form so just go to your uh, signup.ejs guys and we already have the form here available to us if you go to it this was the route that we created and now we will basically enter the email address here and password and whenever we click this button we need to write little bit of javascript to handle this form submission we will make basically make a fetch request to the backend api that we already created inside our authentication controller this is the sign up we will make the post request to this one sign up post so now we need to do this a post request to the uh, if you see in the route section we have defined this slash sign up you need to make a post request so now go to sign up ejs so right here we will write some javascript so just after this form here just put a script tag here guys and for this we will first of all get the reference of the form we will say document.query selector form and then guys basically we will get the references to show the error messages for the email address and the password as well for this also we will say the classes that we have given which is email error and similarly for password as well so we will simply say password error so this will be password and after this guys we will simply have to assign a event listener so add event listener so whenever form submits so this callback function will automatically execute e having the event object we will automatically prevent the auto submission of the form by invoking e dot prevent default and we will basically reset the email error and the password error by using text content 
password error text content so after this guys we will get the values that the user has written we will say the email address we will say form dot email dot value so you need to give this name attributes for this guys so we already given that so we are using it form dot email dot value and similarly you will get the password as well form dot password dot value that's all and now guys we will inside try catch block we will make a fetch api request to the backend server so here we will simply make a fetch request so we will say uh, await so you just need to make this function as async guys because we are using await here just make it async and this fetch api is already available inside the browser guys so we will say fetch sign up and this takes a callback oh, sorry another argument here you can provide options so here the method will be post and inside the body guys we need to provide the data we need to wrap all the data using json.stringify this will convert the json into a javascript object and here we will pass two things which is the email and the password that's all we also need to pass the header guys which is uh, content type application json this is necessary because we are passing json data that's all so we need to pass this header guys which is content type application json now guys we will uh, now to get the data we will say that await response.json this will convert the data into json and then we can console log the data that's all what we will get and now if i go to my browser guys so let's suppose if i go to the sign up page and i also open my console so what you will see guys let me just create some space if i enter an email address and if i enter a password click on sign up you will see that this json response will be returned to us we got the email address we got the hashed password here so now if you see uh, if i refresh my database a record will be entered here you will see that email is inserted and a hashed password is also been inserted you will see that and now if i again want to sign up with the same user this you will see this error message will be saying to us that email is already registered if i refresh it if i enter a invalid password you will see please enter a valid email minimum password length is six characters so our error messages are also returning perfectly now we just need to show it right here inside the browser how we can do that it's very simple uh, right here we will need to have a if condition after we console log the data we will say if data contains errors object then in that case we need to say email error dot text content will be equal to data dot errors dot email and same will be for password as well data dot errors dot password so now if you see guys so if you don't enter anything let's suppose if you enter the same email address that you entered last time if i click sign up you will see your object that email is already registered but we need to see this email right here so why it is not showing it let me see duplicate key here also the error is showing let me restart the server so if i click sign up guys uh, it is perfectly working here you will see in the console the response is returning here but uh, it is not showing it inside the browser let me see why it is happening here 
uh, I figured out the error guys why it was happening because uh, there is no errors object we are comparing it data dot errors but if I check it inside the console you will see if I enter an email address if I don't enter a password then basically uh, if I just say here if I enter this you will see basically this uh, object will be returned to us but it contains two properties email and password these error messages but it doesn't contain a object of errors so I forgot to add if you go to your uh, user.js sorry not this file but this uh, authentication controls so this file we are basically sending this errors as it is so we need to wrap this inside an object like errors that's all so just we are sending an object not a straight so just make this change guys so just surround it as a set of curly brackets and now if you refresh your application guys so you will be seeing the errors right here if you enter an email address if you enter don't enter a password you need to enter it you will see minimum password length is six characters so this is a error message which is showing here you will see it's an object of errors and also if you don't enter a valid email address you will see please enter a valid email so we are also showing custom error messages guys at the time of browser you will see that and uh, now if I enter the correct details we need to redirect the user to the dashboard page so here what we can do right here so once we are basically having correct details if no errors are there uh, let me go to your uh, sign up dot ejs if no errors are present guys if the data dot user object is returned to us in that case we can re, uh, redirect the user location dot assign we have this method we will redirect the user to the dashboard page dashboard page that's all so if you see now guys uh, if i refresh this application if i enter a correct email address let's suppose this one one two three four five six so you will see sign up and uh, nothing happens the object is returned to us which uh, has the email and the password and uh, it doesn't redirect the user because we we does we don't have the user object for having this guys we do need to modify once again our authentication control file so right here we need to surround this uh, we only need to send a user id user, user underscore id if you check here basically uh, if i you can go to my blog post guys basically to check uh, let me see uh, this authentic authentication controller uh, response dot user so basically we can uh, just do right like this so we can simply send user here like this and what we can say is that uh, inside sign up we don't need to do like this data dot we can simply have else scenario we can have else and we can say location dot assign dashboard so this will also work if you see if I go to sign up if I enter an email address enter a password click on login I think this is a login page I need to say the sign up page and you can see that it redirects me to the dashboard page this is a dashboard account page and uh, now we do need to modify this guys whenever we redirect the user to the dashboard page we do need to hide these buttons login sign up buttons we do need to provide the welcome message we need to show the user details and a logout button for this we need to create the uh, json web token inside our cookies inside this application we do need to create a cookie guys we haven't have yet created that cookie you will see this section is empty right here so for doing that guys uh, for showing the user details also we do need to write some code that 
we will see in the later sections but i do need to repeat the same thing guys that we written this code for the login page as well so what i will do is that i will simply copy the script code that you see right here i will simply copy this code and i will go to the login page and i will add this code right here just light modifications i do need to make here instead of sign up we will make a post request to the login route we will basically pass the email and password and again we will show the error messages like this and again if the details are correct then we will redirect user to the dashboard page if i refresh this now if i go to the login page if i enter the details let's suppose if i refresh the database you will see these details are there if i enter this email address which are already available inside database let's suppose enter the correct details here click on login so if you go to console here nothing happens because guys uh, we haven't written the code which is there inside authentication controller we already we only written the sign up underscore post code we haven't written a login post code yet so this will be the same here also but here we need to compare the password as well so whatever password that you write here inside the login form here we do need to first of all uh, create the hash of that password and then need to compare with the hashes that is stored right here so this is slightly complicated code that we will be looking in the next section uh, now guys we will be implementing the functionality of the login form so whenever you fill out the details inside the login form we will try to compare the details if it, if the details stored inside the database matches with the details for this we need to define a method guys inside just go to your user.js file inside the models folder and here we will be defining a static method so here you you can define a static method to the mongodb schema by using the syntax user schema dot statics there is a property called as statics and here you can define a, a, as many methods that you want this will be called as static methods so we will be defining one such method called as login this will be a async function and here we will be getting the email and the password so the use this is used widely because we already access the email and the password whatever email password user enters we already get access to it inside this function so here what we need to do is that we need to first of all find the user with that e email we can use await here as this is async so we can say that uh, this dot find one we will use the find in find one uh, function and here we will pass the email address that's all so this will find the user with the past email address that's all as the email is unique the user will be returned to us and if the user has a valid user in that case we will simply say we will we need to compare the password so we will say that auth we will again use await and we will say bcrypt dot compare so bcrypt has this compare method guys in order to compare two passwords hashes of those passwords it will we will pass this password it will create the hash of it and then it will say user dot password and if these two passwords matches guys then basically it will return true in the in this case we will return the user that's all if the you passwords don't match then we will simply throw a error guys we will simply throw a error that incorrect password that's all and this if the user doesn't exist in that case we will say a throw a error that uh, you can even throw errors from mongodb schema as well right here you can say incorrect email that's all so that's why we are basically compared this inside our authentication controller you will see whenever we define that we have shown incorrect email incorrect password so these error messages will be shown inside here that email is not registered that password is incorrect so now we need to show these error messages in the screen guys so what we can say we can go to login underscore post method 
we will need to do extract the email and password from the request body after doing this we simply need to write the same code once again this time we need to basically try catch again if any sort of error take place we can say for the errors we can do the same thing we can call the method and we can return them as a JSON response back to the client here we will first of all get the user by using the method that we defined inside the model it basically is a static method so we can access that method using login so user.login and here we need to pass the email and the password to this method so we are passing the email and the password and after that guys if the user is a valid user then we will simply return the user response status 200 json and here we will return the user we will return the user by its id that's all user underscore id so that's all that we need to do guys here and uh, now we need to go to our login.ejs so right here basically if I basically now go to the login page if I pick a random email let's suppose this email is not registered if I enter the password you will see that email is not registered this error message will pop in and we do need to provide the same email which is let's suppose I provide the correct email but this time I provide a wrong password that password is incorrect you will see that this error message is popping in so now if I enter a correct password and correct email click on login so you will see this will redirect me to the dashboard page which is this is your dashboard page so now you can see our sign up page and login page is working fine here we can create new users here if I wanted to create a new user I can create this you will see that if I need to log in here I can even log in you can see that so now in the next section guys we will be introducing to the concept of JSON web token and we will be uh, storing them inside the cookies machine inside our application right here we will store it as a key value pair and this web, json web token will have a expiry date as well so we will be looking at in the next section uh, now guys i will be introducing to the concept of uh, json web token how to basically create these tokens inside our node.js application and how to store them inside the cookies if you don't know about <coughs> JWT guys it's a authentication method similar to OAuth 2 you have seen OAuth 2 it stands for open authorization similarly we have JWT it has its own website JWT.io if you want to read more about it you can go to their website and it's an open source uh, industry, industry standard for representing claims securely between two parties and it allows you to decode verify and generate tokens and you can play with this tool right here basically it is an object special object which contains algorithm which is used here to generate these tokens and it contains a payload payload generally refers to the data that you store inside these tokens it can have as much as much data that you can store right here there is no such kind of limitation and then there is a third part here which is verify signature which is the signature part where you can uh, secure these tokens and now to basically create these tokens guys inside your node.js application we just need to go to your uh, wherever authentication controller wherever we define our post routes so first of all we will look at the sign up underscore post method so right here uh, whenever you are basically creating this user right here in between these two we will define our json web token so now to define the token guys we will simply say cons token 
and we will define a custom method here which will be create token and here we will pass the user id user underscore id and uh, now we need to define this method guys which is uh, which will actually create the token for us you can define right here at the top we will say that const create token we will basically get the id of the user which is passed here and right here inside this guys we will basically return a for this we just need to require the jwt json web token library right here at the top so you will say jwt so it contains basically guys decode sign verify these three methods first of all we need to sign a token so we will sign a token we will pass the id this this basically will be the payload which we will be storing here id refers to the primary key which will uniquely identify the record of the user this will be unique every time and then we will basically sign it with a secret key and in production application guys this secret key will be a long key secret key which nobody can see you need to save it inside your environment file but for now we are storing it like here which is secret and then we will have the third parameter which is expiring date you can just say uh, we can create a variable which is max age here which will refer for 3 age 3 days max age so we can say 3 multiplied by 24 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 60 so this is 3, three days in seconds so we are providing the expiry date so this token will expire after 3 days inside the browser you can pick any length of time so after this guys we will simply after we create the token our, our token will be there inside this variable so now we need to set this token inside the cookie so we will say response.cookie as you see guys inside our index.js we are already using the cookie parser middleware we are passing this middleware so this makes it very much easy to basically set cook, set the data inside the cookie or read it by the simple response.cookie and here we will store this as jwt you can call this as anything we can store the token like this and the third option is guys which is http only so this is not a for production level application guys you need to use secure version of it this called as HTTP secure but for now we will use HTTP only to true and here also we need to provide the max age of the cookie which will also be three days that we set right here max age so the cookie will also be stored for three days inside the Google sorry user browser and it will automatically gets deleted after three days so after this guys we will basically send this uh, data back to the user so we will say we will make this user we will provide the id like this so if you make this change right here we need, do need to make this change inside our uh, sign up file here so we do need to say if data user like this so just make this change here in uh, both the files also in login file as well if data user because we have a user object that we are returning right here from this file here you will see we are returning this user object and we are passing the id of the user that's all so we do need to repeat this thing for the login functionality as well guys we can simply copy these two lines of code here and paste it inside the login as well you will see that we simply need to after this we simply need to paste it so we are creating the token and then we are setting this token as a JWT inside the cookie like this so now if you refresh the browser guys you will see basically this cookie will be set here if I click on the login button and if I inspect element go to the application tab and this is my cookies so you will see nothing is present right here let me write the pass email and password 
click on login you will now see guys this jwt you will see that this cookie is stored right here inside our uh, cookie section which is the jwt token here uh, json web token this is unique here you will see that and uh, now we do need to basically same is uh, seen for the sign up page as well let's suppose i sign up with a new user enter the password here also if i inspect element go to application so this will now create another jwt token guys you will see brand new jwt the previous one was deleted so now this cookie has been created jwt so now we do need to basically secure our route guys this dashboard route now we don't have a logout button yet let's suppose if i close this if i directly go to this route here let's suppose 3000 dashboard i can directly go to this route let's i think our application lives in 5000 port i can directly go to the dashboard page so this functionality we do need to prevent we do need to prevent users from directly going to the dashboard page only the authenticated users can go to the protected route for this we do need to add a middleware folder here guys so right here inside your root directory we do need to make a new folder which will be middlewares so just make this and here we will be writing two functions inside this file which is auth middlewares.js and we will cover this in the next section so now guys in this section we will basically write these two methods first of all we will be protecting our protected route which is dashboard page so we will be preventing the users from accessing this page only the authenticated users can uh, access this so now we have already created the json web token for having this so now inside this file we will first of all import this uh, jwt dependency we will require it json web token and also we will need the user model file as well so which will be available inside the models folder user and here we will create the first method guys which is require auth and it will basically have request response next and here we will be exporting this method module.exports and these two methods which is first one will be required auth and inside this method what, what we do here is that we will first of all get the token from the cookie so how to get this it's very simple request.cookies.jwt so whatever you called it inside the cookie so if you see controllers we have called this cookie as jwt so we are accessing this cookie right here inside jwt so now we have got the token so if this token exists or not we will have this inside the if condition so if the token exists in that case we will verify this token so jwt contains this verify method to verify this token we will pass the token value and we will pass the secret key which we used in all at the time of creating this user sorry token we use this uh, secret key if you see which is uh, secret so we do need to use the same secret key for verifying it after this guys in the third parameter it takes the callback function error and decoded token you can call this as anything so now if any sort of error take place in that case we already know that this the user has manipulated or someone has changed the token in that case we will redirect the user to the login page that's all and also if the token does, is not existed if the token is not there in the else block also we will redirect the user back to the login page that's all so if the token is not present inside the cookie in that case we redirect back to the login page and also if the token is not correct if it is present but if the token is not correct because we have used the verify method then also we will redirect user back to the login route login page and now in the else block if no error has taken place then we will uh, call the next method that's all we will call the next method 
so next will automatically trigger to the next request this is kind of a middleware function here that we have added right here now we can uh, protect our route so go to index.js we can simply now import this file which is saying uh, auth middleware we can say here uh, require which is uh, we can require these two files sorry require auth and we can say middlewares dot auth middlewares so we are requiring this uh, method guys that you see right here so we can pass this method to the any request out there so let's suppose we want to protect its protect this route we can pass this middleware function right here so right here so now this is a protected route so anytime someone visits this route here this function will execute so now this will check if the user contains the jwt token or not if it, it if it contains this token then all then only they can access the dashboard page so now if i basically refresh the browser let's suppose if i go to my if I go to dashboard so you will see that it will redirect me to the login page it has detected automatically inside my cookie if I see inside my application no cookie is available you will see that so that's why it is keep redire redirecting me to the login page I can't access the dashboard page directly you will see that so now I need to login by providing the details it will create the JWT token if I click login so now it has created the JWT token guys you will see that now I can if I close this if I pull directly here localhost 5000 and if I want to directly go to slash dashboard I can go to it because my cookies contain that JWT token you will see that JWT token is present right here that's why we can access the page directly so now guys we have added this thing here now we need to define the second function which will actually uh, display the details of the current logged in user instead of these login and sign up buttons we do need to display the details as well so for displaying the details guys we need to say check user we will define a next method request response next so inside this guys we will once again check if the token is present or not if the token is present inside the cookies we will have the if condition once again if the token is present if the token is not present in that case we will simply say response dot locals you will uh, manipulate the locals pro property guys you will set the user to null if the token is not present and also we will verify this token again likewise token and we will pa pass the secret key and this will return the error and the decoded token so here again if any sort of error take place we perfectly know that this token is not correct in that case also we will set the user to null like this and here we will simply call the next method that's all and after this also so hopefully you will guys you are understanding the code that I am written right here we are simply basically checking the JWT token after this if the token is correct in the else block we will basically get the information about the user by using await this is the async function so just make it async and basically we will fetch the user detail by user dot find by id and here we will basically say decoded token so just make it async here sorry not this one so we will basically get the decoded token guys from that we will get our id decoded token dot id 
so we are storing the payload guys if you see inside whenever we created the token we are storing the id here inside this token if you see uh, whenever we created the token we are passing the id here user dot id so we are storing we are signing it by the id so that's why we are retrieving it right here decoded token dot id after this we will say response dot local dot user to the user object that's all and then we will say next again so this will basically have the object guys we will access properties email and password and here now we can easily display the details for this we just need to go to our header dot js that we are including so we do do need to say some kind of conditional rendering using ejs so inside this file we will need to display some conditional rendering so this we will do it in the next section uh, now guys we will be covering the last section of this application just the logout button and the showing the user details inside dashboard page so right here we have uh, in the last section we basically created that middleware function which is check user you will see that we do need to export this so right here we will export this method so that we can use it inside index.js so now to basically do this go to index.js guys so we do need to basically uh, require this method in all the routes so we just need to do right here like this uh, app.get and we will need to pass star here so this simply means that it will be applicable to all the routes if you check my app.get star so whenever you open any sort of route inside my application this uh, function will execute every time check user so star simply means that so after you do that guys uh, we just need to go to header.ejs we do, do need to have some conditional rendering here if you know some syntax about ejs so right here uh, we will have a if condition we will have if the user object is available in that case we will need to basically display some details here of the user so we will say that welcome and then we will say in order to embed variables we will say is equal to sign is also there user dot email that's all we will access the email of the user like this we will have a second li tag this time this will be a logout button this will go to logout logout that's all and if basically if the user property is not a applicable guys then we need to have to wrap this inside a else block like this we need to first of all close that if block and then we will have the else block this is slightly messy guys but this is ejs for you and then we need to wrap this here like this so that's all that you need to do guys conditional rendering it is called here so if the user object is available then we are showing the email address and the logout button if it is not available then we are showing the login and the sign up button so now if you refresh the browser guys what you will see if i now i need to refresh this so it is saying that check user is not defined so we oh sorry we do need to require it guys inside at the top so just put a comma check user so if you refresh now so you will see no jwt token is present right here if you see inside application so no cookie is available i need to login in inside my application click on login you will see jwt token will be there and you will see welcome sharma gautam 1987 dob at the rate gmail.com and we see a logout button as well and we have the jwt token if i manipulate this token guys if i change this the user can directly change the token because it is stored inside the user machine so it is not a security issue nobody else can access this token apart from the user who is logged in so now if i refresh this the you the token is not correct so automatically it will redirect me to the login page so now same goes for the sign up page as well if i 
log in with the email sorry sign up with the password you will see this is the dashboard account page so now if you close this window if you go to the home page so one thing I do need to say guys uh, whenever I go to the home page it will automatically need to trigger uh, if I am already logged in if I go to the home page it will redirect me to the dashboard page so what I can do is that I can manipulate this uh, get request as well so we can add some code here if you go to my description the code is already available so we can basically do the same thing here also so we are simply checking if the token is available inside the cookie then basically we are verifying it by the secret key that we used and uh, if the token is correct then we are entering the login route if it is not then we are seeing the login page if it is correct then we are showing the dashboard page if the token doesn't exist then also we are showing the login page so if you now refresh your application guys now you will see automatically that this will detect that you are logged in automatically if I close this now if I go directly to the application home page so now this will no longer show me the login page it will automatically redirect me to the dashboard page and uh, now the last thing is remaining guys if I click the logout button nothing happens cannot get a slash logout so we do need to basically add this uh, uh, route as well so we will simply go to the routes file we will basically add this route which is get route which to the logout will say authentication controller we will say get sorry logout get so we do need to create this uh, method guys inside our controller so for the logout functionality as well so there is a single line of code which is required for this so right here we can define this code so you can say that module.exports uh, and login sorry logout get this will be request response next so inside this method guys we simply need to uh, we do we don't need the uh, next method we just need to basically uh, clear out the cookie so we will say response.cookie jwt and we will simply just define empty for this and we can define a max age to simply one second that's all and then we will redirect user back to the home page that's all this is two lines of code guys for the uh, logout functionality so if you re now refresh here you will see that and uh, if I inspect element go to application no nothing is present here if I log in here with the current credentials I am logged in you will see JWT token is there and if I now log out here you will see this token will automatically get deleted you will see I will be redirected back to the login page and now I can't access my dashboard page if I go, wanted to go to it you will see but this is a really simple authentication system guys we have developed in this series of tutorials so it's a complete one video that I created for you guys and a lot more effort hard work is put inside this video so please hit that like button share this video and comment on this video how you liked it and uh, if you want the full source code of this tutorial you can go to the description of the video and uh, if you face any sort of problem you can even purchase the full source code I have given this link here at a very reasonable price and uh, so thank you very much for watching this tutorial series and I will be seeing you in the next video.